be chatting, you might say, she didn't tell us she was going to do this. No, I didn't. Uh, <laughs> I was just working on some birthday cards here at my house, just some quick note cards. And I thought, you know what, I'm just going to pop this out there and let you see what I'm actually doing. So I'll post all the lists later of what I'm using, and I have a sketch for this one too. Um, we kind of talked about this a little bit last night if you were here, but basically it's using the, kind of unpile my pile here, the note cards. These are really terrific. You get 20 of these in a pack, and they come in Whisper White or the Very Vanilla. I'm using Whisper White, and they're already pre-scored. They have coordinating envelopes. They're a little bit smaller than an A2 card. They're an invitation size. So, and I keep forgetting the size. Let me measure again. They are five by three and three quarters. Three and three quarters? Three and a half. Five by three and a half. <coughs> so, I'm going to do a few pieces on top, and I'm going to show you how I did this one, and then I'll show you how you can mass produce these. Because remember, there's 20 in here. These would be a perfect gift for somebody if you just did some everyday notes. Now, I started out with, let me move this out of the way a little. This is what I was going to use, was the label Me Pretty. And I needed a birthday card, but it's for my son, and I didn't think he'd really appreciate all the flowers. So then I went looking through my stash of stamp sets to see well, what do I have that has a birthday in it that would fit in this punch? Because I really, this is this punch. This is the Label Me Pretty punch. And I, I could use this, and I could coordinate a few things, but what can I use? So I went through a bunch, and I came up with one I haven't used lately, or actually in a class, and it's the Ready to Pop, because we're going to do the box later. But um, this is just this, the Ready to Pop stamp set, and it has With Love, Love is Sweet, from me to you, and happy birthday, enjoy, and ready to pop. All of these will fit on that label, okay? All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make some more room. Oh, the other things that I, that I use are things that honestly I forget. I think of them like adhesive because I use them constantly. This is the stitched thinlets. Let me get it right stitched shapes <coughs> they come in oval square and circle all and you get let me just bring it over so you can see you don't get this one this is a different a different one i love 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 these and if you've been following me you know i talk about them constantly these are like my staple i use these as much as i use adhesive i love them because they give you such a finished cut so I'm using two of those. I'm using the oval and the circle. And I'm also using just a plain circle. And this comes from the layering shapes. And they, you get either circles or squares, circles or squares. But they come with other designs. It's just really basic. Or you could use a simple punch, a one and a half inch punch. I think it's one and a half. I said that really quick and then went, oh, I don't know. I think it's one and a half. Let me check. Yeah. You could use one of the one and a half circle punches and then you wouldn't need to worry either. And that's designed to fit right here in the middle if you have this Label Me Pretty bundle. I love this one. This is super easy and goes with lots of different things. And it's a good size for this card. Okay. So what I did first was, oh, and I grabbed because I'm doing birthdays. I grabbed the birthday memories designer paper. These are my notes that I did. When I did a paper share, when the catalog first came out, I put these notes on each of the paper packs so that you would know what colors are in them and, and what their item number was because you could reorder them. So if you're wondering where I'm getting those little notes from, that's where they're from. So this is the birthday memories. And it's one of those ones that I look at, no, mm, I'm not sure how to use this. It's kind of cool. Like this one's really neat. And we'll use that one tonight. And it's double-sided, remember. This is the side that just kind of goes, okay, that's cute, but it's really almost childish, yet old-fashioned. I don't know about that one. So it didn't, I like the poodles just because I like poodles. 
Um, the little girl's really cute. But again, I think it doesn't really grab me. But when you start to work with it, it does grab me. So again, don't let something that you look at and you think, I don't know, use it. And you might find you kind of like it, actually, when you get to play with it. So let's bring our trimmer in here. Okay, and on the sketch, which I will offload, um, ladies in the VIP group, I popped it up there and I'm realizing there's a measurement that's off, so don't use that one yet. Let me fix it till after class. I was trying to rush to get it up there for you. So five by three and a half, right? Yeah, three and a half. So I'm gonna cut the same paper so that you can see it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is four and three quarters, because I only wanted a quarter of an inch smaller, by three and a quarter. That's my first one. And that's what I did right here. Okay. All right, but I'm gonna step it up a little. And I'm gonna say, well, you know what, let's see what we can do. Let's make this a little bit, a little bit more. All I did was that one layer on this one. And you're thinking, oh yeah, and you cut this oval out of white. Nope, I didn't. What I actually did was cut it out of here. And I took then, so this is cut out. I can show you. See, I cut a hole. <coughs> so then the whisper white from the card actually shows through. <coughs> I don't know why I'm coughing. Let's have a drink of water. Then, I took what was left over of the paper, so I have this, and I put it through the punch. Now, a couple of things you want to do. Look at the back side, because this doesn't really matter where you punch it. You might be able to get something cool on it, and you might be able to punch and get the balloon and the present. It's not really going to show, but it might be neat to have that present over on this side, right? So I'm going to line it up so the present's over there on the edge. I might do it a little bit different. So, I could just pop this down and see now you get the present and the balloon. And then I'm going to put my circle in the middle. So that would look kind of cool. Or I could flip it over and get what I got here. Let's try something else though. This is going to go like this, right? Let's see if we grabbed some... Calypso Coral, which picks up that the color that's in here, and I'm going to make one more layer on top. So I, this becomes a mat instead of the focal point. It's going to change the look of the card completely. Again, your sketch is going to give you the sizes, but since I didn't print them, I have to do it this way because I don't remember. But my sketches make it easy for you so that you don't have to remember these crazy measurements because I hate that part. So I try to keep it easier for you. No math necessary. Okay, so now we have this on top of this, which looks really cool. I'm gonna punch out of this. And what's gonna show through is this blue that's in the background. But I'm not going to punch. I'm going to actually use my big shot. Just hold on. I know this sounds a little complicated, but it's really not. What is she doing? Right, so now i got to kind of find the middle. I could measure if I'm going to be up at night. Or I can eyeball. I tend to eyeball. So I put it on down. I go, yeah, looks about the middle. Give or take a little. I'm good with that. Oops. Pop you in. Now, this is going to give me two purposes. Punching this through using that stitch shape. Watch what happens. I get, there's my stitch shape that I punched out. I'm going to hold on to that because I can use that for something else on my card. And then this, it actually has, can you see? It has kind of this this embossed edge around it, which makes it look even cooler, I think. 
and it would have been the piece I just got rid of. But no, nope, we're not gonna. And this is gonna go here. So now my card looks a little bit more than just a simple layer, and it's building up the size of this piece that's gonna go in the middle, which I could do like that. I could flip it over like that. Lots of choices and how I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to put my sentiment on it. So I have to think about it. I could do it like this. I could also do it out of white. So even though these are really simple, you could use this collection of all these different papers that we just used today. And all the cards have that same idea, but different. So for example, I could take this, flip it over. I could take this oval that I punched, right? I could then add this, and now I've got a totally different looking card with the same ingredients. I could take this, add you, add you, and by flipping and flopping, I get an assortment of cards, but not really all that different, right? All right, then I'm going to go to my original plan, which was put this down with my snail. All right, and then this guy is going to go down. I'm trying to decide if I want this pumped. I don't. I want this nice and smooth. So this is going to go with a snail, and I'm going to center that, okay, all right, now i got to figure out what do I want to do with this middle piece. I kind of like that that's bumped up, but I also like the present, so I'm going to work on what's going to go in the center, and that might help me decide what pieces, what that's going to happen, what's going to happen with that. Making some room here. Slide you over. All right, so now I gotta work with here's my little piece of what is gonna go in the center. I still, I mean, I like that, but I think we've got too much going on because I told you I'm kind of matchy matchy. So I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna go with this, but to make it show up, I'm gonna pop it up on dimensionals. I could also punch it out of white. And show you what it looks like with this stamp set. So these are the stamps that go with that label. I love them. Right, so we have this really cool, this one is your, your kitchen stamps. It's from my kitchen to yours. This is perfect to put on anything that you have baked or made as a tag or a little card. It could also be done on a belly band around the jar of jelly if you made it. I don't make jelly ever. Um, so that's not gonna work for me. Um, I'm gonna use the super cool birthday with the with the flowers. Um, this one isn't for my husband, husband, brother, son, husband, any male in my family. I've also got this really great circle that I like that says thank you for caring. So I like that one too. But what I'm gonna do first is this one and then use my punch. And I'm sticking with my, oh, are you big enough? Yeah. I'm sticking with my Pacific Point ink, which matches my blue, because I can match it. And we're going to bring that in. And I think you'll see that when you just kind of get your supplies out, you start with your sketch so you've got your basic measurements down, you will start playing and think of 100 things that you could do. Um, not get blue ink on your finger would be a better choice. That would be the first thing I would not do. I'm going to take that off before I get it on. Yes, I could use a wipe, but I tend to use my stamp and scrub because then I don't have a wipe to deal with. So I just spray my finger and I wipe it off because I love the smell of this too. Okay, stamp and scrub, stamp and mist. Love, love them. All right, so we got this all stamped. Now we're going to punch that down. We're going to move this so we don't get it in our hand again. 
So pretty and so simple. And then flip your punch over. And then just line this up. And when I use the punch, I tend to get it where I want it and then squeeze it so it stays there. And then I use two hands. Okay? So there's that. Now, what's neat about this set is this circle that says, um, thank you for caring, is going to fit right in the center. Or I can do it this way. Bring this up. And punch. Thank you for caring. I love that one. And then I can decide which one of my circles. Now my circle punch would work, but I can also, because I don't have that circle punch, I have my stitched shape is going to go right around there. So that's the one I'm going to use. Hold on while the big shot comes back. Up you in, line you up so it's all center, nice and pretty. Stop fussing with it, just commit and go. this, as you can see the stitches, really cool. And then let's put this all together. So we have this, we have this, this, and this. All right, so this one is gonna go with dimensionals, just because you can, I don't ever think I can have too many dimensionals on anything. And before I put that down, I'm going to put this one down, but I'm going to use snail. Put that on there. No, thank you for caring. It's going to go here, and you can see that just fits right in there really nice. And then we're going to dimension that. And you can see where these extra little framelits really add so much more to it. Because not only is it an oval, but it's a stitched oval. So it just really looks so cool. So even though this is going to fit right back in the hole, I didn't necessarily have to cut the hole out. But why would you waste this orange? Because now remember, I still have this. So it's going to go in there perfectly. I could have done it without the oval, and I could have just popped it in there. Let me show you how that would be, maybe. No, I can't. I don't want to ruin it. But I could have done it without the oval. I could have saved it. Now there's that, and you're thinking, well, you know what? That's kind of, it's a little plain. I might want a little something around the outside here. I could grab another stamp set, and I could stamp in the corners. I could leave it and be happy with it. I could have made this an oval. Remember, those stitched ovals come in like a nested set. I could have made this and cut this a little bit bigger, and that would have taken the corners away, and I would have cut an oval in the middle. That would have looked really cool. But clean and simple is my like, you know, and, and you can see that I used similar materials, but got totally different looks. Perfect, cute little thank you cards. And if I'd used different colors, I would have had a different look. You may not necessarily be somebody that likes Calypso Coral. That's a little too bright for you. Okay? All right, let's do one, uh, one more because I, I'm going to use this one and I like it. Um, and I need to start at the beginning. 
start with our papers and decide what papers we're going to use. Now remember, this is the flower one. This is the flower stamp. It looks like like this happy birthday to you. So in, for me, I want something pastel-y and sweet and simple. And that's not necessarily these cards, these papers, but they don't, they aren't all super bright. This one's kind of, I do like the poodle. I wonder if the poodle's too big. How's that gonna look? Yeah, poodle's too busy for me. It might be good for someone, but the poodle's too busy for me. So I think I might use that. I also really kind of like this because of the cake and the balloons. Let's see, what else do I like? Birthday cake's too big, especially for, these come in 12 by 12s, so they're great for your scrapbook layouts if you're doing any kind of, and then you get the full, the full view of these. Um, I've cut them into six by sixes because I am not scrapbooking right now. Um, I've been making cards and that's where I am in my little creativity world. So I don't ha need, have the need for any 12 by 12 right now. So this time I'm going to pop the card as a vertical card and it can and because I don't I want to keep this lighter my next layer is going to go I'm not going to put a full layer on top of it because I kind of like seeing this paper so I'm going to put this down to get started just so that I have it the base of my card going And I'm going to stick with the white. I'm going to stick with my whisper white. All right, I'm going to set you right there for a minute. And I need to cut myself another piece of this to work with. All right, so on the whisper white, I'm going to go with um, let me go with red. Which ink does it tell me? So then I go to this and say, okay, what color? It wants real red matches this, coordinates with this one. So real red, I don't have to think at all. Blah, not thinking. And I'm really going to keep this easy. I'm not getting carried away. I'm going to do the happy birthday. Ooh, that's going to be really pretty. Is that neat? Oh, I love it. Let's zoom you in so that you can see a little bit better. Love that one. Now, I could, I could watercolor that if I would like, but tonight I'm just going to leave it. I'm not going to color. I'm going to bring in my puncheroo. Line this up, and you'll see how quick and easy this is. Whoops, I'm not in front of you anymore because I zoomed in. And then I'm just going to pop this down here at the bottom and be good. I'm going to zoom back out because I keep ending up not showing you anything. There. Pop that down there. Of course, on dimensionals. And seriously, this took me minutes, minutes. And it's a great card, ready to go. Now let's do something to make the envelope a little special too. Okay, so there's that. Then I have my envelope. And I'm gonna take this one, this is the one, thank you for caring. No, I don't like that one. 
I'm going to do from me to you, and I'm going to go on the outside of the envelope with it. I need to clean it first, though, because it's got my specific point on it. I clean my finger, but not my stamp. All right. Again, I'm matchy-matchy. You might not need to do it the exact same color as me. There we are. And now I'm all set, right? So we made three cards in 20 minutes, including me talking and getting ink on my fingers and everything. Uh, thanks for popping in. Um, I, I'll probably do this more often this week because I don't have a lot going on as far as classes planned. And I'd love to just show up and say, hey, you want to do this? So you never know. It's always around this time now. Um, have a great night. I will get these uh, recording posted on the blog. And if you want to see like the supplies that I actually used, it'll also, it'll also be on YouTube. So you can, and you can download the, um, you can, the, um, the simple sketch will be on the blog. Remember the blog is caramiller.com. I know, don't you love this Carol? I love the red. I really do. I think it's so pretty. And again, this is paper that just didn't grab me. It really didn't. But once I started to play with it and, and started putting it together, I do like it. And it's super easy. All right, guys. Have a great night. I'll see you soon.